Hi, this is Gary. Well, Spore is finally here and it's on the Mac. Let's take a look in this episode of MacMost Now. Well, Spore is a long anticipated game from Will Wright, the creator of SimCity and The Sims. And this is the successor to those games. This is the all-in-one game where you take a single-celled organism all the way through civilization up to colonizing the stars. It's really five games in one. Let's go and take a look. So the basic idea is you create a simple life form and make choices to help it evolve. In this first stage here, you float around in a primordial ooze and eat and evolve. This plays like a simple arcade game and doesn't last for too long, but it is visually rich and it can be challenging at times. It's really just a quick introduction to how you use the creature creator and how you move around. The second stage moves your creation onto land. This part plays like a 3D platform game. You run around the landscape and eat plants or other animals. Uh, you can make friends or just kill anything that gets in your way. The third stage puts you in charge of town of your creatures. At this point, your biological evolution is over and you concentrate on building the town and expanding your tribe's influence. This plays a little like uh, the original Warcraft game. In the fourth stage, you're in charge of an entire modern city. You also grow to take over other cities by force or influence, and eventually, the goal is to rule the entire planet. This part's a little like the real-time strategy games such as Age of Empires or Rise of Nations. The fifth and final part of Spore puts you in outer space. You create a spaceship and then travel between the stars looking for planets to colonize, invade, or to trade with. At the very heart of Spore is the creature creator. At the beginning, you use it to modify your single-celled life form. Then you continue to use it to modify your land creature in the next stage. You also use this interface to design outfits for your creatures, uh, design the buildings in your city, the vehicles, the sea ships, the airplanes, and eventually even the spaceships. The game's two best assets are the interface and the graphics. The game looks spectacular. Every little piece of it's a work of art. Every creature you create, the landscapes, the planets in outer space, everything. And the interface is extremely intuitive considering that the game is very complex. The game has a lot of hidden depth as well. For instance, in the fourth part, when you're actually controlling your city and taking over the planet, you can modify your nation's national anthem. There's a little anthem composer interface in there that's extremely easy to use to create a piece of music. Now some problems with the game are that it may be too easy for hardcore gamers. I was able to easily get through all the levels without any difficulty at the normal setting. Now for casual gamers it might be a little bit too complex. And there's this goal driven thing in the game where every level you're driven to accomplish the next goal. And some parts of the game seem to tell you to stop and smell the roses and other parts of the game are telling you to hurry up and get to the next part. And there's a lot more details in this game that I'm not even going to get into here. Like, for instance, the creatures that you create are uploaded to a central server and may actually make appearances in other players' games. As a Mac game, I was really impressed by the stability. The game only crashed once in about 10 hours of gameplay. That's really something for a 1.0 version of a game that has been patched yet. And I was even able to switch to windowed mode and check my email, surf the web, while playing the game in another window without any problem. So if you're into real-time strategy or you want to see what all the hype is about, about the most anticipated game in years, go and check out Spore. Until next time, this is Gary Rosenzweig with MacMost Now.